Welcome, I will now show you how to assemble the hardware of the autopilot. Um, to do this you need to buy a couple of components. I'll provide a list of how to do it. Um, so this is the ISP32. Uh, I personally like to use a USB-C variant um, because um, I like to move to the USB standard nowadays. This is the motor driver. This is an IBT 2H, I believe. Um, rated for up to 40 amps. There are also smaller ones available. Um, those are L298N and they are uh, rated up to 2 amps. And you need some jumper wires to connect the ESP32 to the IBT, um, then some cables just to power the ESP, to connect to the motor, and um, this is my battery, and this is the linear actuator. Um, so to get a linear actuator, it needs to be lock to lock for about 10 seconds. This one is, I don't know if the focus will work, but it's rated for uh, 200 newtons and it will go in um, 50 millimeters per second and the stroke is 300 meters per second so in theory you get a 6 seconds lock to lock but that's without a load so how these work there are a couple of wires some position feedback wires but the two thicket wires are the plus and minus they can be red and black that's normal so to show you how they work, I first, this is just to simulate my, my battery. I just like to use these very handy Vago clips. Just put them in there. Terminals are safe. It's probably also a good idea to buy a fuse. So how these work, or how a linear actuator works in general, just if you add plus to the plus and minus to the minus so I do plus and plus now that's extended one way fully so this is an end switch so I have to do minus and minus minus and minus and now if you just apply 12 volt current so it starts to move at maximum speed control the speed you need a motor controller because it makes a lot of sound on maximum speed and if you just switch the wires red and black if you switch them it, the unit retracts well simple as that um, I haven't told you this is a ESP32 baseboard uh, please mind how many pins it has I think this mine has 32 free pins available these little headers I mean. The good thing about this board is, I um, don't know if the focus will work. Uh, so basically for each pin that the ESP connects to you have a plus 3.3 volts, a ground and a signal wire which is a GPIO. Um, you can just insert a an DC plug type um, and it's really convenient because you have a lot of pins and you can swap the boards. Uh, this one has an onboard, it says uh, up to 16 volt conversion. And you also have some nice area to glue the ESP on. So I just slide it in here. And let's start connecting. Um, what to do first? Let's do the motor driver and the wiring. So black is always ground, that's a good one. So you need fem jumper, these are called jumper wires. They're both female to female. So I just pick a ground, G and D ground, place it on pin one in this case, which is central ground. Will it focus, will it focus? How 
how do these things focus? No. Mm. You have to believe me, it's in the top right. Mm. I'll make a better picture of it. Um, so then again, these are the ground wires. Now, the IBT2 has a plus uh, voltage, plus 3.3 volts or 5 volts you can supply it with, um, and enable pins, and I just, you enable them by apply the positive voltage to it. So I simply use some positive pins, so it's always has power so it's located over there so in my case it doesn't matter which wire you take this one is the VCC then this one is LEN which stands for left enable uh, okay now the tricky wires is actually the signaling wire to turn either left or right at a certain speech using pulse width modulation as you can see. Um, so we, I use pin uh, 33 to the left and 32 to the right. It's a bit arbitrary because you need the S line, the signal line, 32. In 33 so you can swap 32 and 30 T because left and right is different for your boat if you place the linear actuator on the right side of the boat and it extends then you will steer to the right but if you uh, place this unit on the left side of the boat you get a different angle so just swap these if they are inverted so I don't care which one so let's put this one on RPVM, stands for Right Pulse with Modulation. So, so the, that one is now hooked up. I also prefer, now if I now move to the power phase, I'll do this plug. So, got a neat little screwdriver. And on the bottom it says minus one of uh, M minus M plus B plus and B minus. So B minus is battery minus and uh, M is stands for motor. So uh, this will be the feed from my battery. So let's mimic that. Uh, bio. These are 14 AVG wires, enough to hold uh, 20 amp currents or so. So uh, let's put this one in. Now just make a double check. We're now doing the battery, so that's the, this one is the battery minus. Minus. Okay, that one is in. I also bought silicon wires and they're uh, tint wires. So normally you see the red copper, these are tint wires. Um, it's better in a salty environment regarding corrosion, not a necessity. What I also got, please. I don't have one by end, use an inline fuse, just a regular fuse holder for car fuses and use a fuse that suits your actuator. Um, so now hook up the linear actuator. You can use any motor that you want, as long as you've got a DC motor which runs on 12 volt. Normally you have a black and uh, red wire coming out. This one is a little bit different. Actually the one on my boat is a hydraulic pump. 
a reversible hydraulic pump. I put this one in the motor minus and motor plus. And again, you can switch these around as well. So if your motor turns the wrong way, you can either switch M plus and M minus, or you can swap pin 33 and 32. Um, these, this is a DC plug, a standard one, center positive, what is it, nine millimeter stick. Uh, just to feed my ESP32. So I got my little Wago connector here. Let's put it in. Let's put it in. I think we're all set. Plug it right in there. Um, and then I have my battery connection left. I should have added a fuse. If you see smoke, I did something wrong. Perhaps it's a good idea to triple check. No sparks. So the ESP powers on all right, which is a good sign. Um, actually, this one isn't loaded uh, by the autopilot software yet, but it, I just like to check it. Always oh, good. Why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? It's actually a good, good way to see. Um, signal 3232 32, 32. PVMs. Ah, ah, stupid, stupid me. This wire. wasn't correctly attached. <laughs> ah. Always good. So, when I put the pilot is off, you can move it manually. So this is cool, huh? So I can also turn it on, and now I can turn my phone start moving. Okay. Awesome. So let's start with uh, the program of the ESP. So we need to do a few things. Um, first of all, I still would like you to show how the wiring is. So this is the IPT2 from the main, we have the battery connected, the motor, actuator, whatever. Um, so from the plus five volts, you go to the plus five volts and the two enable pins of the IPT2. Ground connection goes to the ground and from pin 22 we go to the PVM left and from pin 33 we go to the PVM right. Super easy. Now um, if you connect your uh, ESP to the computer you will have to hear a sound right bleep bleep. USB connected. If you open your device manager, you will see below COM port USB serial CH340. Then it's okay. Otherwise, we have to open the, uh, the drivers and you download the universal Windows driver. Okay, if that's correct. And you need to download the Arduino IDA. I already have it open here. I haven't installed it, uninstalled it for this application. So set it up, agree. Only for me, only for me. takes a little while. 
something even more wire. So while it's installing, uh, what you need to do is add the support for the ESP32. Arduino is default for it's a tool for Arduinos. So let's do finish. Go to tools, uh, board, board manager, then you type in ESP32, select the second one, ESP32 by Espressive Systems, install. Take some water. Okay, successfully installed. So tools, go to boards, expressive. That's a way so we can see it is installed. Then you go to board, select another board and type, I type in dev kit, so do it ESP32 dev kit, select it, COM6 serial USB port, that's correct, you can check your USB port by going to the device manager, ports, then you see your COM6, so that's correct, you can quickly um, this is an empty sketch, so if you do file new sketch and you simply press this button upload it and see if it works. Just connecting and writing, resetting, done. Success. Here comes the tricky part. We have to create a folder named Autopilot Basic. So let's do that. Create a new folder. Call it Autopilot Basic. Go to the GitHub code. Download as zip. Um, we can place it in my desktop. At the pilot. Uh, so it's downloaded. Desktop at the pilot basic. You can uh, so extract. Um, all here, sorry that is in Dutch. Ooh, this is not what I intended. So, all the files need to be in this autopilot main folder. Actually, the README is only a GitHub thing. The license, please read the license. So, this is the sketch. If you double click, the Eno file, it will open uh, the Arduino EDA, select your board, that's the dev kit again, press OK, and then it's sent to the device. So it takes a while to compile because it's a bigger sketch. Doom, doom, doom. It takes a way longer while. Perhaps close this screen. It shouldn't matter. Oh, that's really busy.
It says uploading. If it doesn't connect to your board, then you have to press and hold the uh, EN button. If you see connecting, dot, 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 press and hold the an EN button on your ESP32. And then once it continues, release the button. It could also be the boot button. There are many Chinese clones. But there's also a way to work it. So it's done. And now to check if it's working, you go to tools. Go to serial monitor, and then you basically see everything that it prints out. Now you see serial begin 11, that's the bout rate, technical term, doesn't matter. Select the same one in your serial monitor. And if I now quickly unplug and plug my ESP again, you see the Set up complete. So basically, what you see. So let's do a quick code safari. Serial print line. Serial setup complete. That's exactly what you see here. Waiting for a client to notify. That is about the uh, Bluetooth connection. So let's start the autopilot app. You see it's connected immediately. Uh, motor set to speed zero. If I, for example, now uh, manually move the motor, then you see the received values. So then you know for sure that it is working. I don't expect you to adjust the code, but this is super simple. Well, simple is relative. This is all stuff could be deleted. So you set up the motor, set up the Bluetooth. That's all what's happening here. There's no loop. If you go to the Bluetooth file, you see some technicalities. So there is a clutch pin. If you need a clutch for a hydraulic ram or um, something else, it's turned on. So what basically happens here, if you go to the setup, uh, set the clutch pin low, initialize the device called autopilot, Make sure that all the OVS servers are created. It's very technical. Um, but what you see here is actually the most important one. If whenever a command is received, it's a string. So we have to decode the little string. If it starts with, if the string starts with motor, then it's derived the speed from that string and set the motor to that specific speed okay if you go to the motor.cpp file um, you see the pins here defined for the right pulse width modulation 32 left 32 and right is 33 um, set up that the pins are an output move the motor to zero and this is the setting the motor. So you have the speed in the direction. Uh, so there's still some old code in here. So defining the speed of the motor. And in the end, if the direction is one, analog right, left PM zero, right PM is the motor speed. So it's actually turning right. That's it.